Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. Today we're going to do a quick oil change on this awesome car and we're also going to do a quick inspection on it and let you guys take a look at it right after this. This is a really awesome 2011 Bentley Continental and even amongst being an ultra luxury car it's kind of a supercar in a way even amongst Bentleys, it's really special. This is a super sports model. They came out with the, this generation of Continental GT in 2003, and the first generation goes all the way to 2011. The super sports model ran from 2009 to 2011. It is a special edition with lots of really awesome upgrades, as you guys are gonna see when we get this thing up in the air. It has 621 horsepower, 590 pound-feet of torque. I really think that this car could outrun Hoovy's Murcielago. I really think it could. It is extremely fast. 0 to 60 in 3.7 and top speed of 204 miles an hour. It means business. It looks like it means business. It really does mean business. What's really cool about this car is that the Super Sports model was designed to also take E85 fuel. Unlike the Ferrari that we're working on where possibly ethanol destroyed the fuel pumps and all the parts inside the fuel pump. This one would be designed from the ground up to accept E85 fuel, which means you could get really good horsepower. They claim the same horsepower and performance on way cheaper fuel. I think that's really cool. It has the 6 liter W12 and just in this picture I'm showing here, it's an engine that's basically a V12 but the cylinders are oddly arranged in a W shape. That, that makes it more compact and they can fit it in a shorter nose of a vehicle. It's basically an Audi engine and the entire car is basically an Audi car except the styling and the body and exterior and the interior. When you sit inside you know you're not sitting in an Audi, you're sitting in a Bentley. But there's most of the parts on here are Audi Volkswagen parts. This car when new was $270,000, almost three hundred grand extremely extremely expensive so we're going to get it and put it on the lift here and we're going to go ahead and do a quick oil change and we're going to let you guys check it over look on the underneath so without further ado let's get it on the lift now one thing i'm going to have to do with this vehicle just like on the white bentley that you've seen recently in a video I can't just throw it on the lift and start lifting. I've got to push the shock button and the vehicle ride height button at the same time, both of them at the same time, until a icon comes on the screen and it will say jack mode. So I'll do that real quick and we'll get this thing ready to put on the lift. Here we had a ride performance button and the vehicle height button. I'll push both at the same time and hold it down for about 10 seconds. You'll see a little icon, a little red, there it is, you see? That means it's ready for jack mode, ready to be lifted. Now I'm going to put it in park and turn the key off so we don't have a dead battery. Take a quick look underneath the car. I'm going to have to take this uh, belly pan off so we can do the oil change and we'll also take a look around in there but we can look at the rest of the car. There's a few really cool things I want to show you guys. As you can see it's got a giant belly pan on it. We'll go ahead and check over here. Nothing loose there. As you can see it's all-wheel drive with air suspension. It's a really cool all-wheel drive system. Take a look on the other side of this wheel, guys. I want to show you guys something. Look how big the brakes are on this thing. That's like a 747 jumbo jet. They're huge. When this car came out in 2011, it had the biggest brakes of any production car ever. They're also ceramic. That is not metal, guys. That is ceramic. 
carbon fiber reinforced ceramic. If you had to replace all the rotors on these, there will be multiple thousands of dollars just for the rotors. That doesn't include labor or pads, just for the rotors. But these things, you can get them glowing red hot and you still don't lose braking performance. These are really huge, amazing brakes. Let's go ahead and take a look down the middle of the car. Nothing loose there. Big brakes. Nothing leaking there. I don't see any issues over here. There's the transmission. Nice and dry. That's a pretty beefy transmission to handle the power coming out of this thing. I don't see any leaks anywhere so far. The big beefy drive shaft. Differential, no leaks at the differential. Nice and tight there. Nice and tight there. This does have new rear wheel bearings I put on. And when I replaced the wheel bearing hub assemblies on this, I did not put Bentley ones on. I put Audi. I believe they were A8 wheel bearings. Same thing, identical part numbers. We can see on the CV shaft, the four rings of Audi. Also the VW symbol. VW and Audi, that's what this car is all about. Everything on it as far as mechanical or electrical is going to be VW Audi. That's to our advantage. When things fail, we can look at Audi parts or VW parts to replace them. Nine times out of ten you will be able to do so and save a ton of cash. Take a look back here at the exhaust. There's really not much to see with the, the shields in the way. So let's go ahead and get the front belly pan off and start our oil change. Okay, we'll use our T30 Torx. Start taking all these bolts out. Now we're going to use a T25 Torx to take these wheel well screws out. Same T25 to take these along the bumper off. One really cool thing about this transmission is that the front differential, everything, the transfer of power to the front wheels is all part of the transmission. Being that it's a W12, they can scoot this forward enough to be able to get power to the front wheels and still not have the engine hanging out too far. Look how wide this oil pan is on this W12. Huge. Here's our oil filter that we're going to be changing. And our oil drain is right here. Let me go get my drain cart here. It's a 19 millimeter. Usually while this is draining, I'll check the wheels and brakes and all the things that we've already done. But I will check the radiator and the belt, check the radiator for any leaks while we're waiting. I don't see anything wet or leaking. Also there's our belt. It's one of these interesting double-sided belts that has grooves on both sides. Very interesting, but it looks like it's in new condition. No issues there. I don't see any power steering leaks or water pump leaks or anything like that going on. One thing I check for on these cars, Porsches or Bentleys or things with, with intercoolers is I make sure that the bottoms haven't been hit like on a curb or a parking stall. You can see these scrapes here where they hit the parking stall or whatnot. 
This will easily crack or break if something's hit. Make sure there's no damage there. We would have a check engine light if there was issues, but I just like to make sure everything looks good. So we'll put this drain plug back on. Everything's all drained out. Torque it to torque to wizard foot pounds. And then we're going to move her to the oil filter. I have this handy dandy snap on socket that's called a flip socket. I will not have this in my Amazon affiliates because snap on doesn't sell stuff that way, but I'm sure other brands sell these. I might put something on there. It has 24 and 36 millimeter on it. I need the 36. There's a hex on the end of the oil filter housing. Let that drain. filter out. Wipe the inside of the oil filter adapter. Here we have a brand new Hanks oil filter made in Germany and a new o-ring. Put the filter in, just push it in all the way till it bottoms out. And we'll change our o-ring here. Brand new one. We also put a new crush washer on the drain plug when we put it back on. I have a whole set of copper washers that I use for that. Here's an interesting thing. I've heard people complain in the comments that I don't fill these up with oil when I put them back in. I'd like you to explain in these comments how you're going to fill this with oil and put it back in. It'll dump all over the place. If you put fresh oil into this and then you turn it sideways, it's going to dump all over the place and you lose most of it anyway. So there's no way to pre-fill this with oil, so we're going to put it back on. And one thing I want to bring up is if it was going to be detrimental to the engine to have a dry oil filter, what would be the solution here? There isn't one. The reason why is because it's not going to hurt the engine. Two seconds of it to fill this cavity with fresh oil is not going to hurt the engine. It's just not, guys. I put oil on the O-ring to lubricate it. You don't want to put it on dry. Clean the area up. Okay, we got everything drained. We got the oil filter replaced. I'm gonna go ahead and move this drain cart out of the way and lower it, and we're gonna fill it back up with fresh oil. I'll put this pan on, this belly pan on later for to save time with filming. So let's go ahead and get this cart out of the way and lower it down. Now in the second generation Bentleys and just like any other car basically, when you pop the hood, you reach, reach around in here and you look for the latch release and raise the hood. But on these first generation Bentleys, which is 03 to 2011, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, they have a different way to open the hood and it has caused many quick lube places to lose their mind. This guy has taken it to a couple quick lube places when he was in a bind and he, he really had to get it qu done quickly. He always gets a phone call, I can't open your hood. I can't find the latch. It's right here. The B. You lift up on it, it pops up a little higher. You pull the B, it sounds kind of crazy. There you go. That's how you open the hood on these first generation Bentleys. We're getting, we're getting ready to put some oil in, but I just wanted to show you guys around here. As you can see, the engine's relatively short because they have a staggered cylinder arrangement. That's why it's called a W12. It's a six liter, and this isn't just your standard W12. This is the super sports version, which has quite a bit more horsepower, almost a hundred more horsepower. This engine would be set up similarly to the Ferrari we've worked on, where I mentioned there were two computers, two mass airflow sensors, two throttle bodies controlled by two separate computers. And that would be the same situation here. When you check for codes on this, you have computer one and computer two. 
you might have a check engine light come on and you connect your scan tool to it and you read computer number one and it'll tell you I don't have any codes please see computer number two so you have to go to computer number two and oh there we go we found the codes and you move on with whatever you're doing but you have to keep that in mind on these cars this is something that really flips the lid of most older mechanics they're like what in the world two computers it's really not that hard if once you open your mind up but let's go ahead and get this thing filled with oil big metal heavy Bentley cap this being an Audi W12 this is not a Bentley W12 it's an Audi we're going to use the European car formula mobile one zero W40 which says approved for most Mercedes VW Audi and Porsche if you go to Flying Spares website and order oil for this Bentley, you will get Mobile One Zero W40. So that's what we're going to use. This takes almost 13 quarts. And at the customer's request, he would like to have some BG motor oil additive put into his vehicle. I sell quite a lot of this and it's very very good stuff I highly recommend it he was putting Lucas into his vehicles but I talked him into purchasing the BG products and so far he's been very happy and I've been happy to sell them to him I took a second here and got everything ready got all my oil scattered all about I've had many people ask me why do you use these little bottles car wizard especially over in Europe they use the giant jugs or the big five quart jugs or and the reason is is I don't really focus on oil changes it's not my big thing here I will do them for people on these cars when they don't trust the quick loop places to work on their Bentley or Ferrari or Lamborghini I'm happy to take care of that for them but because I don't really do that many oil changes every month maybe three four there's no reason to have $13,000 worth of oil sitting on the shelf in different fluids. I used to work in aircraft years ago, and they practice something that I like to practice. It's called lean manufacturing. You don't have multiple thousands and millions of dollars of product on the shelf. You order as needed. You keep a few items, just enough to get by, and when you use that up, you order more. From any given week, I don't know what kind of oil I'm going to use. I don't know how much either. It doesn't make sense to order the giant jugs and have all these things sitting around. Also, CarQuest is where I get most of my supplies from, and they are literally a 30-second walk from my door. 30 seconds, guys. They are just right over there. I can click on my computer and say I need to six pack of oil or a 12 pack of oil and literally in five minutes it'll be here they deliver for me so I don't need all these jugs and jugs and jugs of oil stacked up on the shelves everywhere it doesn't make sense for me to do that I also get special pricing that the public doesn't get on car quest supplies and things so people say these these cost more than the jugs not for me they don't maybe for you but with them I spend multiple thousands a month so it makes sense for them to give me a, a break at this time we're going to go ahead and put our BG MOA in we're about halfway through filling it up it looks like brown I don't know goo black almost it's got all kinds of zinc and additives and things to really help with wear on the engine. Get that out of the way. There's nine. Being that this takes 13 quarts almost, I'm going to put about 11 or 12 in and then I'll start the engine and then let it warm up, turn it off, then I'll see where I'm at. I don't want to overfill it. This is my 11th one. I'll go ahead and pour this in and then we'll start the vehicle. Let it run and circulate. Fill the oil filter up. Then we'll fill as needed to get to the full mark with the last remaining oil. So 
So we're going to check the level and see where it's at now. When it first started, you guys noticed the timing chain rattle, and I counted three seconds. It was exactly three seconds to fill the oil filter, build up pressure, and now we're circulating oil. The three seconds that it rattled caused no damage. It will not cause any damage. It's not a big deal. It's not nothing to worry about. Let's go ahead and check the level here. And it's just touching the dipstick. So we'll add one more quart. And looks like we'll have to add another half a quart to a quart. We'll see. We'll try a half a quart first. We're into the safe range, but I'm going to put it to the top of the safe range, which will take the, the remaining half a quart. Thirteen quarts plus BG additive. And this is also a car that people might call me on, and maybe they just bought one. Right on full. And they say, how much is an oil change on a Bentley Super Sports or even a Continental GT? I say, well, probably $200. They're like, why is it so high? You guys just saw me go through 13 quarts of oil. And how much is Mobile One Synthetic? Five, six, seven, eight dollars and you add all that up, plus the filter, plus the time, the inspection, and sales tax, boom, you're at $200. That's not high. I'm charging you a fair price. I don't understand why that's considered high. When I tell them it takes 13 quarts, they're like, oh my god. You should have researched your car before you bought it. The Jiffy Lube places will have a cheaper oil change, but they're going to use stock house oil. It's like bottom of the barrel, cheapest, cheapest oil you can buy. Do you want to put that in your Bentley? No. This is what's recommended, the European Mobile One Zero W40. The Quick Lube places advertise the $40, $30 oil change. That's for five quarts. It's not for 13. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing a car like this. Maybe research how much the oil changes are. You'll be shocked. You'll be like, oh my god, that's so high. But most people that own these types of vehicles are not worried about the price of the oil change. But surprisingly, I do get a few calls of people that are. Check it one more time. Right on full. Very good. I'll check the other fluids real quick. The brake fluid is just a little bit below maximum, which is good. Nice and clear and clean fluid. Power steering. It could use a little, but it's, it's within the safe range. I'll add a little here in a little bit. Antifreeze. There's really not much to see on this. It would have a warning light come on if it was low, but I can see that it's nice and full. There's pretty, not a whole lot else to check on here, so... And one last thing I like to do with for customers is fill their washer fluid for them. This one looks nice and full already, so we'll leave that be. Okay. And when you're done putting the hood down, you have to push the B. We, we pulled the B a minute ago, now we're going to push the B. Now we're done with that. The interior of these Super Sports is just incredibly striking. It's beautiful. It's got red piping on the seats. It's got red stitch diamond quilted Alcantara seats. There's a nice Alcantara headliner with a leather strip down the middle. Very high class. I love it, love it, love it. It also has carbon fiber trim accents on the dash and in the center console. This is not your cheap 3M adhesive carbon fiber. This is the real deal. This is real carbon fiber. It has the nice opera pulls for the the vents. You can open and close them. Nice beefy metal shifter. Not a piece of plastic. 
on the white Bentley I recently pulled the cluster out to do some work and I was amazed when I pulled this dash bezel off this IPC bezel it is solid aluminum solid metal it is not chintzy plastic you definitely get what you pay for on these hand stitched one thing I always like about the Bentleys is the smell the interior just smells amazing it smells like a coach handbag it's just amazing that's I've told you guys before that's a real big deal for me on a car is the interior and also the smell if those two things don't jive with me when I sit in a car I don't care what kind of car it is I uh, I can't get with it I won't I won't be interested in it but on this car boom both things jive I love it so you see all the the leftovers on the ground the empty bottles I'm not going to let someone drive out of here for a $50 oil change when I just put that much oil in their car. So, I'm glad you guys could follow along and check out this car with me. When the owner called me up and said it was time for service, I was excited. It's like, you guys need to see this car. He has two Bentleys. He has the white one that we've seen and he has the Super Sports. He also has many other cars. He has a Turo rental service that he has. He rents Porsche Panameras, Mercedes, these would be for rent as well, although they're not going to be cheap, but they're worth the rental. But you've seen kind of what I go through when I do an oil change on one of these cars. I actually have a video on the white Bentley doing an oil change service on it. It has the V8, this has the W12. Anyways, I've been seeing you guys ordering a lot through Amazon affiliates. I'm real appreciative for that. I wanted to thank you guys for that. We've got many more cool videos to come. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. There's going to be some really cool videos coming down the line. Again, thanks for watching.